It is so good to be here. And because this is one spirit, I want to open this up in, open it up in prayer. Hmm. So this is what I know. I know that there is one power, there is one presence, there is one life. And though it may be called by different names, I choose to call it God. And I am aware that sometimes it is called God, sometimes it is called Yahweh, sometimes it is called Allah, sometimes it is called Olodumare. But whatever it is called, we choose to call it forth into our conscious awareness, recognizing that it is the only thing that's happening here. In fact, we don't have to call it by any name at all, but recognizing that there is an infinite intelligence from which all things are created. And so I recognize and I acknowledge that from this one, all things are manifested. From this one, all things are supported. From this one, this one spirit, all of life is expressed. I guess the Tao says that out of this one, the 10,000 things are created, meaning that out of this one, there is nothing else happening but life expressing into and as everything is seen and everything that is unseen, everything that is known and the yet to be known, all there is, is God. And so recognizing and acknowledging that God is everywhere present at all times, I know that at all times, God is present right where we are, right here, right now, spirit is, right here, right now, God is, we are. And so it is in my awareness of our oneness in one spirit that I speak this word for this time together. Man, I name, I claim, I declare, and I accept that this time is good. But we have come together by divine appointment for the soul's purpose of allowing us to dig deeper and to open up even wider so that we may fly even higher. See, I know that this time is magnificent because it has never happened before, and it will never happen again. Not like this, not in this configuration. So yes, this time is special. This time is magnificent. This time is miraculous. And so it is from this divine awareness of gratitude that I now just release my word. I take my hands off of it, and I allow spirit to do what spirit does, and that is to live, move, and have its being in through and as us. I give great thanks. I surrender it. I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Amen. Amen. <sighs> mm. Welcome, everyone. It is so good to be here. So I just want to go through this quick description, right? There's, I just want to, and Lane and I have been looking forward. First of all, I want to say, Lane and I have been looking forward to this, my beautiful co-host of Race Talk Re Re Revolution. Um, and we're going to get into how that came about. But you know, there comes a time when, when each of us must ask ourselves the question, man, what is mine to do? We see all of this stuff that's going on in the world. And, and sometimes, you know, we have this thing that says, you know, what is mine to do? Who am I to be in this? How can I help? So as people committed to making a difference, we have all embarked on individual and collective journeys to discern to what and to where we are called to perform our sacred work. For this, there is rarely a single answer. It may show up in so many different ways. The process of discernment can be as challenging and as confusing as it can be joyful and liberating, especially, especially when somehow we know that answering the call will require us to be someone we have not yet been. And that can be a good thing. Sometimes it's scary, but it's always good. So, you know, for many of us, the radical discourse in our country invites us to look more deeply at where we are being called and who we are being called to be. So in our weekly Zoom cast, Race Talk Revolution, Ray showed we as, you know, Reverend Lane Cobb and myself, Reverend Eugene Holden, we engage people in loving, compassionate and inclusive conversations about race and invite us and we invite everybody to explore the question, what is ours to do? Hmm. I want to I wanna just pass this over to Lane just for a few moments here. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that prayer. 
Absolutely. You know, I love prayer. I know, and I love it when you pray. Yeah, I love Indeed, it. I, I love pray. to be in the room, but yes, you do. I, I love what it does to me. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm selfish like that. So thank you for being here, everybody. We're really thrilled. It's so great to see folks that I know and folks that I don't know, but really, we all know each other, right? So there is no, I don't know you. Um, you know, we, when, when George Floyd was murdered, um, I, I called Eugene uh, because I know, knew that I had to say something, I had to do something you know, interfaith reverend, kind of sitting on my hands, watching, getting angry, getting sad, going through all of the emotions that all of us go through when we are witness to tragedy and heartbreak and so forth and called him and I just said, listen, I've been silent long enough, I can't take it anymore. And spirit wants me to start a conversation to bring people together around humanity to explore humanity and to just have a conversation that transcends race so we can start to heal this. And would you like to do it with me? He said, yeah. He said, I've been silent too long too. I just told him I can't take it anymore. I'm making myself sick. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and so we embarked on this journey together about a, a, a year ago, a little over yeah. a year. And We've been growing and we've been um, transforming together. Our intention was, was and is to create a loving and safe and courageous space for healing and transformation around the racial divide in the country. And it has really become an educational platform and it has become an encouraging place for open and honest and courageous dialogue and a place where people can have those tough conversations and show up and be vulnerable and just bring everything that they are. Our slogan is your voice matters because it really does. We say that we practice radically inclusive love because we respect everybody's right to have a say. And it's really critical for us that we honor the divinity with each, within each and every person. So even when we don't understand or agree with somebody is sharing, we practice compassion. We listen, we listen with patience. We listen with love. We accept, we enfold, we encourage, we uplift. And it's been the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. And I'm so grateful that I have this partner, but also I know that you all also are partners in this venture. And so we wanted to bring this conversation here, what is ours to do? Because we've really been on a journey. And I know that we had this conversation when I was at One Spirit in Seminary, we had this conversation. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today with you guys. We're gonna ask you to do a little bit of work. Some of you already may have all the questions answered and that's okay, there's always something else that opens, right? When you open yourself to hearing the voice of the spirit, the spirit will speak because the spirit always is speaking. So I guess what we wanna do is just tell you a little bit about, you know, I think I already told you a little bit about my collective journey. I'll let Eugene share his, but I had been hearing that voice for a long time. Start a conversation, start a conversation, start a conversation. <laughs> And yeah. I had just been doing everything under the sun to avoid it. I don't know how. I don't want to do it by myself. It's too hard. Who am I going to talk to? And finally, like for a lot of people, it took seeing that man lying on that pavement, that other man's knee on his neck, and to see the people taking to the street and feeling like I needed to be out there too but that wasn't my thing. But knowing that there is something, there was something. And Eugene, thank you for saying yes. Why don't you share a little bit about your journey and then let's, let's open it up to these beautiful folks. Yeah. So my journey really started many years ago. I was in my, gosh, let's just say late 79, uh, maybe 19, yeah, about 74. 
78, 79. And I was at that time living in Oakland, California, which is really, um, uh, uh, it was great to be around that in, 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 in energy of, of Kwame Karuma and black nationalism and all of that. And I was getting into that, but also what was happening is um, the job market wasn't all that great. So I caught a bus after being in Oakland for six months and getting involved in that, but then still not have, finding work. I, you know, jumped in a bus and made my way back home to Pasadena, Cal Cal California, got a job within the next week. And, and even though that fire was still in me, I married this European, this, this Caucasian woman who I was married to for 17 years and had four, four kids, but that was my way. That was, well, mm, well, we've been divorced now for 20, for 20 years. But that was my way of not doing that work. I mean, in one moment, I'm in Oakland and, and going through this work and doing this Black nationalism and, and trying to, to bring about, you know, how, what, what's mine to do in terms, terms of race, racism. And then I get back to Pasadena and I shut that door. I sh literally shut that door and didn't talk about it anymore at all, at all moved to um, San Fernando Valley, lived a mile away from where Rodney King got beat. And even then I'm going, I have to do something. Well, that little voice was going, you need to speak up. Fast forward, uh, 2016, there was a lot of um, police killing, you know, um, oh man, there, there was there, just, just killings of, of, of black men and women and, and, and that one, that one child, the teenager, um, oh come on, who was walking home from a, the the store, and the neighborhood watch guy. I can't names are not coming to me right now. Um, Trevor. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, and I and when when that verdict came down, where where they found that that man was not guilty, my heart broke because that young kid looked alike. And that could have been my sons, all three of them, could have been all of them. And I was just in tears, you know, and, and, and still, I didn't do anything. Moved to Denver, Colorado, and my two sons, again, I've been divorced for 20 years. So as my twin boys got into high school, they came out to live with me in Denver. I was living up in the mountains and I enrolled them in the high school there, the local high school, which was all white. And one of my twins looks more like, more, looks more like his mother, who he doesn't look mixed and the rest of my kids do. So, and so they're twins, right? One looks mixed, one, one does, does, does not. Malcolm comes home to me and he says, dad, if I hear the N word one more time, I don't know if I can contain myself. Now, these kids are from Los, Los Angeles, and now they're in this, this mountain commune, community, small mountain community. Um, and I realized that, and I went up to the school and talked with the principal, and I'm an emotional person. And, 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 and I wasn't mad, I was hurt. I was hurt. This is 2000, 2010. 2010, the president is black, right? And, and I'm at this high school talking to the principal. I'm in tears because I know that he can't do a darn thing about it, nor will he want to. Now, 2016 comes about and there's uh, some happening that, you know, people are getting killed and police are getting killed and there's all this stuff going on. And I was doing a workshop in da Dallas. I landed there in Dallas and the person who picked me up said, did you hear what has happened yesterday? No, I haven't. Well, there's a black guy who killed some cops. And at that's when I broke. That's when I broke. That's when I broke down. Because that voice was saying, you need to say something. You have a platform. You, so I wrote this long thing, which was great, and, and it felt good, and then I got quiet again until a year ago. With all of this going on, George Floyd and everything else that's going on in that year, and Lane and I had just met, actually, a few months prior, I don't know how long it was prior to her giving me a call and says, Eugene, I have this idea. This is what I want to do. I want to, I want to create a platform where we can come together and talk about this because 
this is on my heart. I am hurting. And I'm like, I need to say something too. And that's how race talk, race talk began. Now I have to admit, there was something that I read, you know, er earlier for many of us, uh, the process of discernment can be challenging and confusing as it can be joyful and liberating. Yes, it is joyful. What Lane and I do on Race Talk is a wonderful thing. It's some powerful work, but I have to admit that in that first month, I was not pleased. I was upset. It was hard for me to look at what was going on. It was hard for me to go back into the history of racism, the psychology of racism, the, the economics of racism. It was hard for me to look at that. And then and I was like, Lane, this is not mine to do. Until one day, Spirit said to me in my meditation, Eugene, this has nothing to do with you. I'm like, damn. But once I heard that, that's when my growth began to open up. And there was some, you know, and so here we are. And Race Talk has now gone through Race Talk Revolution because we are in this beautiful revolution. Lane and I came across a word somebody shared with us this past week. You know, when we are not revolutionaries, we are evolutionaries. Here's the thing, folks it's 2021, and we are here, all of us on the screen, we are here for a purpose. And that purpose, especially on in this platform, we all are here asking that question, what's mine to do? What can we do? So we're going to talk about what it is that we can do. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And, and I love the story because it continues to grow me. So let's take a look. David, if we can put up that First black slide with a couple of questions, folks. This is where you are going to need something to take some notes. Yeah, what breaks your heart? What makes you ang angry? You know, what is it that you get emotional about every time you think about it, see it, hear it? Ooh, here's a different way to look at this too, Lane. When you see something, everybody, and, and whatever it is, right, George, George Floyd, or anything like that, or whatever's going on, and you don't have a reaction to it. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, that too. You might also want to look at what, what are the themes. There might be some themes in your life, something or some people or some something that you consistently find yourself in the midst of or taking care of or acting on something some theme that keeps returning for me it's always been there's always been something about race because for me i have you know we've all been traumatized by racism in some way People of color, white people, all of us. So for me, I know that that kept coming up for me from a time I was a little girl and through my college and adulthood, that thing followed me around. What are the themes in your life? Maybe you've had a thought or a dream or a conversation that keeps coming up. It just won't leave you alone. Like I said, the spirit just kept telling me you need to bring people together to talk about this bring people together to talk about this over and over is there a particular group that you want to impact or a difference that you want to make and for whom would you like to make it And I know I'm just going quickly here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop you. I want you to continue to create if you're creating. What is your superpower? Right? What is your superpower? My superpower is curating conversations and making people feel valued and loved and appreciated. Eugene has that same superpower. 
us a, a few more things, right? We, we, we know how to put together messages. We uh, invite people to things and they show up. That's a superpower. We are committed to helping people to connect with their divinity. Being able to do that. We all have a superpower. What's your superpower? Just real fast around that divinity piece, right? For the longest time, I, I thought because I was spiritual that I could not get involved in the, 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 the things of, of the world. No, no, that's not, that's not the case. Right. That's spiritual bypass, right? Yeah. 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 We've all, yeah. Been there, done that. I can speak for myself anyway. Been there, done yeah. that for a long time. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the quote verbatim, but it was Martin Luther King Jr. talked about it. it is his, it is his faith, you know, in God. It is, it is, it is his religion that has him doing, had him doing the work that, that he was doing. So if you're ready, I, we would like to invite some folks to share. You can uh, place your, um, in the chat, if you have, uh, let's see, uh, we're gonna ask you some, some other questions. So let me say this, if you know, and I see Susie has raised her hand, if you know what is yours to do, would you please share that? And how did you know? How do you know? Right. We can start the sharing there again. If you know how to um, want to be reminded how to raise your hand, you can go to the bottom of your screen, hit that reaction buttons and there's a, a raised hand there or you can find your name in the participants and you can raise your hand that way. Susie, please do share. Good evening. Hi, thanks for this conversation. Um, as you were talking about spiritual bypass, that's one of the things I wrote down that certainly I've been doing. So I'm, I'm, I have bullet points that I'd like to read. Um, what breaks my heart? What makes me angry? Um, that there are people in the world that don't feel safe because of the color of their skin or how people think they look. Um, systemic racism, um, certainly something that has been brought to my attention because of all that happened now. And I feel blessed that because of the time I had during COVID that I could get involved in conversations like this because I certainly was not paying attention to it before. Um, the other thing that breaks my heart is how, when will it ever end? How does it end? Um, politics are weighted towards bigotry, education, not only what we teach people, but what kind of money is spent and what kind of communities, mm. the, the disparity there. Um, we're taught expectations. I know that my parents thinking they were protecting me taught me horrible things. Um, the, the themes are, I, I, I'm fearful, I'm sorry, I'm inactive. Um, all of this won't leave me alone, especially when I see it in someone else. And that's where the spiritual bypass comes in. Like I, I can see everyone else who's a bigot. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm just realizing that I am too, that I, that I have racist thoughts constantly. Um, my superpower is listening and networking. So thanks for this opportunity to talk and listen and network. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So great. Eugene, Reverend Patricia shared something in the chat. Um, she says, my work is helping people see themselves through their engagement with me. I do this by showing up, asking questions no one else dares to ask and saying what I have to say out loud. Mm. People who feel alone or different break my heart. Yeah, mine too, because yeah. that is that, that, that was me and a lot of times still is me. <laughs> even though I know I'm not alone or different. <laughs> I love that. Eugene, who's next? Emma and then Vicky. And let's just say, remember guys, what's yours to do doesn't have to have anything to do with racism, okay? Right, right. We're, that's ours. We want you to share about yours. Hi, good Hi. to see you both. 
Thank you, Emma. Gosh, what makes me angry is when um, there's just so much evidence of white supremacy and of privilege. And there are so many people that just refuse to, to, to understand and to look within their hearts and, and just to open their minds to that, um, which I mean is, is just simply opening your, your heart to love. That's all it is, love of humankind. Um, so what really makes me mad is that just that unwillingness to look within. And at the same time, I think it's, I, you know, what that is, is a fear of looking within. So it breaks my heart that people are that afraid of their own survival that they can't look within their hearts and find that. And I didn't write all your questions down, but um, I work, I, I'm a teacher, I teach children. Um, you know, and the greatest joy that I get is when I can teach children to look at each other from the, through the lens of the heart um, and to have conversations with them, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times they say seven and eight year olds shouldn't be having that, con that kind of conversation. And, you know, it's so untrue. And I think that part of my superpower is being able to sit with children and have these conversations and, and open their hearts and open their minds to this. So that's, I think that's what's really important for me and what I can do. But thank you both, you know, and, and I also, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a gentleman, that, that was something else that came to mind when Susie was talking, um, when he was so heartbroken thinking, is this ever gonna be able to change? And he didn't think it was, you know, on your program. And that really, that broke my heart. And I wonder that too, can it change? And that does break my heart as well. And I really hope it can. I pray it can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. You know, and that's the thing, right? When sometimes we get into that place of God, will this ever change? You know, what, what breaks my heart is God, I'm so tired of seeing this. And we can't give up. Not, that, not only we don't give up, well, can let me speak for me. It's not that I don't give up. I can't give up. Got to keep talking. Got to keep smiling. Got to keep saying hi. You know, yes. Vicki. So I would, I raised my hand for a different reason, but I just have to respond to Emma because I was a teacher also and I'm running for school committee now because I asked the same question you had asked, Eugene, what's for me to do? Um, and I teach kids that their superpower is to choose their thoughts. And that's a really hard one for me because I was diagnosed with ADD and ADHD as an adult. And when I mention that with kids, hands go up all the time. I have that. I have that. I said, I know. And so I traded in med medication for meditation. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so it's been really powerful and, and kids are learning that easier than adults. But the reason I raised my hand is because I just want to take you and Lane and bring you over to Pittsfield, Massachusetts, to the meeting we had this morning, because we've been meeting for the last three months on how to create community conversations around restorative practices. And how do we create little pockets of it with people who have the right heart for this work? Because that just breaks my heart when people are not treated with compassion. Pisses me off big time. I was mad at the housing department because they couldn't find a home for a homeless person that's waited three years for a Section 8 voucher. And now we can't find them any place for her to live. So those things really upset me. But I know that just being mad is not going to help. So... We're looking at a long-term kind of thing. And I'm really frantically taking notes like, oh yeah, we need to have this. There's no revolution without love because there's a, a young gal from the DA's office part of this conversation. And um, she said, Vicki, it sounds like you want to have a revolution. I think this needs to be evolutionary. And I, and I said, yeah, it's too bad you didn't know me in the 70s. Whoa, I was a revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> but I got kind of burned out of always fighting. And now I'm ready to love everybody up, um, including the people that piss me off. If I can use that word, I'm sorry if I'm being too crude, but I've been on the street a lot with homeless people this last few months. Um, so um, 
I, I love these questions. Um, we're trying to create a, a larger community conversation live, and uh, these would be really good guides. So thank you. I'll let other people have a chance to talk because I get a little carried away. It's okay. Thank, thank you. you so thank much, you. Vicky. Thanks for your authenticity and thank you for the work you're doing. You're bringing yeah. your, your power to the work. And if Eugene and I can be of any assistance, please let us know. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, Michael, share. And then I know we have something I'll, I'll read in the chat. Okay. Um, hello. Hi. Hi. This is my first time participating in uh, one of these forums here. Welcome. So, hi. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for hosting this. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at the questions on the screen. What breaks your heart makes you angry? Um, for me, it's um, seeing people act out of uh, deliberate ignorance, mm. um, acting as if their interpretation or understanding of something is all there is to it, turning a blind eye to other possibilities or options or further knowledge. Um, yeah, and that, that gets me, that gets the, the heart, heart rate going there. That, that makes me pretty angry. Uh, themes in my life are um, being, being of service and deep listening. I've uh, done a lot of volunteer work in my past, and that's something that seems to have been there since, at least since I was a teenager to now. And I'm just looking to start getting involved in some volunteer work in the past couple of days. I'm looking to get back into that again. Um, and deep listening, I've had a lot of friends and coworkers come and seek out conversations with me. I've been told by many friends that you're a good listener. And that's something that I've consistently been, that's come, consistently been remarked on about me. Um, what is a thought dream conversation that won't leave you alone is um, being of service. I, I definitely feel the, the, the impulse to be of service, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that. I haven't known what to do with that in my life's direction. Um, and what, Im I see, what impact and for whom? I definitely want to be of service for, for anybody, everybody. But since my, I have a five-year-old daughter, and since my daughter was born, um, I definitely want to have a positive impact on being of service to, to girls and women. I definitely want to do my part to have a positive impact on opportunities for girls and women. I want my daughter to have all doors and windows open to her as much as possible. And my superpower, um, empathy. That, um, empathy would definitely be my superpower. But it could be a double-edged sword. It can leave me drained too sometimes. But hmm, that's what I've got. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Lane, before you go to the question in the chat, Michael, I want to, first of all, thank, thank you for being here and thank you for, for speaking up. And you brought up a wonderful gift that I feel is, is a part of the lost art of communication. And that is that part of listening, right? And, and, and to me, sometimes listening is a lost art. So it's great that, that you are doing that, that, that you really are proud of that. And I also then want to invite you to, when there was something that you said that, that you don't know what to do sometimes. So you want to take your listening skills to listen to what's being said from within, right? So if there is a meditation practice that you have, or just to get still and ask the question, all right, that divine, whatever you want to call it, what is, what, what is the guidance? What's wanting to be birthed? What's wanting to come forth? And then listen for that, listen to that. 
And then as we begin, this is for everybody too, as we begin to listen to that more and more, and we begin to hear it, and then we get to act upon when we start to act upon it, then we then it speaks even more. Yeah, so keep listening. We get to, I love that, right? Stay tuned. Stay tuned to that voice from within. Michael, thank you so, so very much. It's good stuff. Mm. And as you say yes to what you're hearing, then yeah. the universe says yes. Says yes. Yeah. So, yeah, thank good, you. Good stuff. Michael Cabrera. Cabrera. Thank you. Debbie. Yes, ma'am. Me, okay. Yes, you. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is such an honor and blessing to be here. Um, I just want to say a quick thing to Vicki. Vicki, thank you for your share. As a former retired teacher, retired social worker, and um, a person who has been diagnosed with ADHD as an adult, um, you know what, it's a challenge, but we also have many gifts. All of us, all of us do. So thank you for your share. Um, what breaks my heart, just on, on a global level, institutional racism, inequality, um, discrimination, but especially for me personally as a Jewish woman, you know, coming from my groups and in, in, in my roots in Judaism, uh, I lost um, family members in the Holocaust, including my grandparents. They were born in Austria, Vienna, uh, or Vienna, Austria. Um, and I, I'm, I'm so horrified, and I shouldn't be, but just, you know, in our, in our country, in my lifetime, in this time, I'm, I'm seeing just you know, Nazi swastika flags, Jews will not replace us, and, and just the, the blatant anti-Semitism, so on, on, on a really very direct personal level. I, I, I'm just terrified by it all. All of the George Floyd, the, it, it's just beyond, 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 beyond. It, it's almost, um, again, it's, it's beyond. So it breaks my heart in many, many pieces. Um, what... The impact for me, and, and um, I'm, I'm gonna put in a plug, okay, for One Spirit in Action. And I do wanna give a shout out to um, my colleague in One Spirit in Action, Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Um, One Spirit in Action started about eight years ago and I've been with them almost since the very beginning. And we, we focus, and I invite anyone, please come and join us in, in whatever way you can. Big, little, it doesn't matter. We, we just so would welcome you. We have done presentations on mass incarceration, unconscious bias. In one of our presentations, we actually asked very similar questions. What breaks your heart? And um, so I, again, I'm very blessed and honored to be involved in One Spirit in Action. Um, and in terms of my superpower, it's, it's absolutely um, being of service. Um, the, um, I actually incorporated into my seminary vows without even knowing it, but one of my favorite, I, I guess, ma mantras in a way is um, from Rabbi Hillel. And it, it basically, it's really simple, but for me, it's, it's a way of life. It's, it, it's just how I wanna live my life as best I can, which is if I'm not for myself, who will be for me? So there's the self-care that I need to work at. I'm not so good at it. And I, I think it's so crucial because if we cannot take care of ourselves, you know, the bottom line is we're going to be very depleted and um, not able to really care for others and, and um, you know, the best way we can. And it's kind of that little analogy. If you're on a plane and God forbid the plane is in trouble, you're with a child or whatever, you put the mask on yourself first and then on the child. And the, the next part of that um, is if I'm only for myself, what am I? So it's not even who am I, it's what am I? And then of course the last part, which is a very famous part, um, that's not even often associated with Rabbi Hillel is, if not now, when? 
and I'm I'm getting to the point in my life. I'm I'm not um, thirty something anymore. Believe me. And I'm looking at my life, how much I have left, as opposed to how much I have since I was born. And it's like again, if not now, when? So I do. I guess in, the, in my small part, maybe it's a domino effect. I, I try to do my part to give back, um, be in service with kindness, compassion, but not spiritual bypassing. I can be a badass. And you know what? There's a place for that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you. There's absolutely a place for that. Eugene, I just want to speak to what Debbie said and also um, that I think Michael also spoke to it. Like, we are all ministers, right? Whether we're ordained or not, right? Each of us has a ministry. We are all just ministers and that ministry can be very exhausting, right? Being committed to service, having a superpower where you're just called to service all the time is exhausting. Racial justice work is exhausting. Taking care of people is exhausting. Loving people can be exhausting, right? And we have to remember to just extend that, that arm of love right around ourselves like daily right because we can feel when we've forgotten right and then when we re recognize that we've forgotten to be bring ourselves conscious and then intentional you know about that eugene has to remind me all the time because i'm a professional you know i know how to beat myself over the head real well right and uh, and so you know just remind me lane have you gotten up and taken a walk like, have you, you know, because I'll always say, I want to get from behind this computer. It's like, well, get up get and up. get, get up. <laughs> You know, it's like, no, but everything won't get done. It will get done, you know? And so I just love what you were saying about the, the need for self-care is absolutely huge. Um, it, yeah, we're, we're, we're all just so precious. Our, our souls are so precious. Our souls are so delicate. And yet we are stronger yes. than we know. Yes. Stronger than we know. Um, Just real you, fast. Yeah. Just real fast before mm -hmm. you, um, the other half of that, that, that saying, Debbie, right? If not now, when? If not me, who? Yeah. Yeah. You were going to say, Lane? I was just going to go to what Leslie Martin had to share in the chat. Should we Please. do that? Yes. She says, what breaks my heart is two things, absolutely cruelty and also poverty. Poverty can affect anyone and is a leveler of all people. Mm. Having been there, it is close to my heart and I can continue to let myself how I can. Okay, I think you mean lift, Leslie, but I might be wrong. Having been there, it is close to my heart and I continue to lift myself how I can. What is powerful for me is the absolute passion with which I am able to teach in my field. Suddenly there is no shyness, no fear, and no concerns except for the wonderful heaven-sent moments in which I am able to relate to those I am with. Wow. <laughs> Empathy is such a gift, and that is what others have built in me. Mm. And she also says, yes, Debbie, I love that phrase. If not now, when? It has rescued me many, many times. Thank you. Yeah. I am so moved. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, Thank yes. Thank you. Wow. Yes. Whew. When we lift ourselves and others. Yes. Yeah. What's that, what's that uh, verse? I, if I am lifted up from the world, I will draw all others unto me. So let's lift each other. Let's lift ourselves up. Let's lift each other up and be that support for everyone. Mm -hmm. I love the way you spell your name, Leanna. She hides her face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're definitely alone and loving the way I spell my name. It's yeah, I know, right? <laughs> lifelong drama. <laughs> um, or lifelong love. Hmm. Well, yes, for as long as you know me, you can have that love. I have no problem with okay, that. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> you can hold it for both of us. Um, you know, it's really interesting to think about these questions in this way. And I notice that what comes up for me is this sort of um, what feels like an untenable division of labor. <laughs> because the, in its most basic, hmm. what breaks my heart is unkindness 
it's the it's lack of it's any time I see a lack of compassion in the world, and that that can be all the way through acts of violence and all the way back on the other side of the spectrum of you know somebody who is cut somebody off in traffic or is rude to someone or you know it doesn't it's it's these are all this incredible unkindness and a lack of compassion that I find very hard to witness to to be in the presence of um, and related to that is division um, the division that I see and especially because that's where the momentum is right now the momentum is in centrifugal force things that push us apart from each other um, and we are becoming as a you know in, in this country anyway becoming more and more polarized <laughs> Um, that's that's the direction that a lot of things are moving in. That's that's where you feel the the force. And I trust that that counter force, that centripetal force, is is active and is happening and is and is becoming greater, is becoming stronger. But that balance has not tipped yet, and so that division is painful for me. And the other thing that that really breaks my heart is what's happening to the earth coming from um, deeply from pagan tradition, I, it's, it's breathtaking to me what, what we're doing to the earth. And, um, so those are the three things and the themes in my life, you know, transformation, healing, the thought that won't go away, centripetal force, knowing that whatever I do in the world, I want to be, I, that's the force I want to generate. I want how I live and how I work and what I do to be generating that centripetal force everywhere I go, everything I do professionally or otherwise. Um, but healing and personal transformation, you know, watching people go through difficult times by themselves and particularly sort of crisis times or catastrophic times. I, I had a catastrophic injury 20 years ago that was a deeply spiritual um, you might even say mystical experience that made my life infinitely better than it had been prior to being injured. Yeah. And um, it has been the focus of my, my professional work, but I also feel like there's something shifting there from this personal to the collective work. Um, my superpower is inspiring people. It's facilitating hope and courage in people. Um, as a speaker, as a writer, as a storyteller, as a performer, and, and also seeing what's hidden, seeing and reflecting mm -hmm. what's hidden, what's underneath, what's in the, on the edges, what's um, covered over, you know, with, with all the things that we cover ourselves over with, and being able to reflect that back to people as I go forward and think about what's next for me, what wants birth, you know, what is, what is asking to be born? This remains a big question because these, these sort of prongs are swirling around each other and haven't yet found, it, maybe they don't all merge and maybe there's a focus you know, in one and there's, there is hobby work or there is, you know, I, I join a group or there's some activism in another area. It doesn't necessarily all have to come together. But this is, this is really the question is where, where can I land? Where can I sit in and be that centripetal force? Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Centripetal force. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. You know, I think sometimes we do feel like we need to do everything all at once because there is so much to do, particularly when we have a lot of superpowers, like when we're good at a lot of things or we're holds to it by a lot of things or we're interested in a lot of things and it can become quite overwhelming and become kind of analysis paralysis, which we need to be, be careful of, right? Just because that is just take the step and then, then if that's the step, then we will receive confirmation. It is, it is a faith walk. It's that, that again, to talk, uh, quote Martin Luther King, uh, talking about the staircase, right? You have a light for the first stair. You can't see the whole staircase from here. It's faith that has you take that first step. 
And that's what I need to keep bringing myself to because my conversation or my relationship with faith in the universe has been real tricky over my lifetime and throughout seminary and the whole night you know it's just kind of like i don't know no i don't see it i don't know i don't uh, you know, i've never done that before i don't know i did it before i didn't like it you know i didn't right it's that that whole whatever that trust thing and it's kind of like just deep breath i love what uh, debbie was saying i am 61 oh i don't know how long i have left i want the next half of my life right to be kick ass fabulous right be doing Why what not? i yeah man putting my foot in something you know, so, so it is to just take that step and put that foot out and it might not be, it's not, it probably won't be the perfect thing. We all want the angels to sing and then we move, but really we have to move first before the angels start singing. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. So yeah. I know we have about, about five minutes left. And just real fast, right? You know, when we, because we are so all of us are so talented and we have so many gifts and, and there's so many things that we want to we want to serve in right because whether you're a minister ordained or not you know to minister then one of the definitions is to see to the needs of of others right so we have all this stuff going on so then for me it's like okay let me ask the question what's mine to do right now and maybe it's like, okay, let me leave that list alone and let me just do this right now. Yeah. Oh, what's yours to do? And this is for everybody. Be kind to yourselves. Talk about love. Love yourself. Okay, we have a few more minutes. Where are we going, Reverend Lane Cobb? <laughs> well, let's take a look. Um, the call I'll tell to you. action? Go. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, call well, sure, we can talk about the call to action. I want to give people an opportunity though too. Go ahead. To if there is something you know that you're being called to do and you're not doing it uh, yet, to take a look and see what support you need. What it, what would you like to request? Maybe mm. there's something that you can voice right now, right here in this group. Right? For me, I always knew I I don't particularly like work being on my own and when i met eugene i knew there was a reason i didn't know what it was but i knew there was a reason and he was just there and i just kept you know okay you know maybe it's this and maybe it's this but i knew he was there and i when i requested that he join me and he did it was a miracle for me and so and then I continue to ask, even as we are partnering, you know, when we hit whatever rough spot, you know, maybe we're, you know, oh, there's too much work to do, or we're all scrambling to find a guest for the show or something, right? Just to continue to say, please, you know, ask divine love to cover the partnership and to bring it to fruition. There's something we need. We need a guest. We need a topic. We need a producer. We need, we need, we need. And we have people, lo and behold, that want to now donate and support the work. I love it. Right? It's, it's, it's incredible what's happening. So what kind of support do you need? And then we can close out. Who would like to share? Yeah, great. Maureen. Thank you for having me. Um, so Spirit brought me here. I don't even know how I'm here. Are you all ministers? I'm not a minister. Am I supposed to be a minister to be here? Nope. I have no idea. You're supposed Spirit. to be Marine. <laughs> there you have it. I'm here. So um, what I am being called to do is to write a book. And um, I, I even have outlined the book. And um, I, and it's about earth. And how we're out of alignment with it um, and how I, how I feel we can um, make a way to that. Um, 
So anywho, that was what I wanted to share because you were saying that if we needed something, so I could use anything if this speaks to anybody because I ended up showing up here for a reason. So there you have it. There you go. <laughs> so someone to help you get your story told, your book written, published, somebody with a resource. I'll tell you what, um, we're going to absolutely give you our information. So you can certainly reach out to me and I'll see if I can find you a resource to help you with your book. But remember guys, keep speaking, keep speaking, keep asking, right? The people who are around us are our partners. Just keep asking and it will be revealed, right? Something, because when we are just keep holding it in our head, that's where it gets muddled. That's where clarity doesn't happen. That's where action doesn't happen. When our gifts get stuck in our mind. So uh, Reverend Patricia Philippe says, my professional background is marketing, but for some reason I feel like I'm doing a dirty job when I aggressively market my services. I'm launching a spiritual support group for women who feel alone. Perhaps you can help spread the word. Of course will do. And if anybody else wants to spread that, that is in the chat right there with an event right link. So Eugene, what's our final call to action this evening? I want to go back to be kind to yourself. Be kind with yourselves. Tap into that, in, that, that inner voice or intuition, um, that, that hunch. Pay attention to your thoughts. Pay attention to your feelings and talk about it. Don't be silent because as we say on Race Talk Revolution, your voice matters. As Maureen just, you know, modeled for us, she, she, she spoke up, right? So speak up, get into action, stay in action and stay inspired. Even when you can't see the staircase, stay inspired. So we're going to uh, have a closing prayer, but I'd like David to show that final slide so people have the link to Race Talk Revolution. We meet on Wednesdays from noon to 1.30 Eastern, and we're also on Facebook Live. Our Facebook page is Race Talk Revolution, and our YouTube page is Race Talk Revolution. So all of our videos also are available. And if you'd like to join us, you can go ahead and um, register right there at the tinyurl.com talk race now. And if you'd like to reach out to either me or Eugene, our contact information is right there on the screen for you to copy. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. You like absolutely nothing better. <sighs> so great spirit. Thank you. Thank you for holding us and loving us and giving us life. Thank you for helping us find our way to this community this evening and for facilitating this wonderful and loving, courageous conversation about what is ours to do. We trust that as we go our separate ways, you will continue to hold us and enfold us in your wisdom and your benevolent spirit and all that is good will be at our fingertips. We open our heart. May we remain open and loving and kind to ourselves and each other so that we may find that path that is ours to walk and the work that is ours to do. Wish you peace and love, everybody. We hope to see you on Race Talk. Thank you, everybody. So happy to be here. Thank you for this opportunity, everybody. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Thank, thank you so much.